Hey there, today I wanna to talk about Bitcoin's recent price action and show some important on-chain data that can help us identify where we're at in the cycle. In my opinion, ultimately, price action over the next week or two is, is likely to be boring while Bitcoin sort of finds its footing here. And we will probably see some some sideways action. I think it's more likely than not to retest both the, the highs and the lows. And we'll definitely see some people getting shaken out of the market. And why? And because everyone naturally wants to see these big moves that we've seen in the past, either to the upside or the downside, right? So, and I want to be clear about something. This is just my read of the data. Some very smart people think cycles are lengthening deep into 2026, whereas, you know, other people think the cycle's already over and both could be right. But personally, I just, I don't think the cycle is over and we haven't yet seen these massive unrealized losses pop up on chain like we have in, in the prior uh, starts of other bear markets and some other metrics as well that we're going to talk about. And the, the beautiful thing about Bitcoin is that the data is all transparent. You can verify everything. And the worst thing you could possibly do, in my opinion, is just blindly follow anyone else's opinion, including mine, right? Do your own research, understand this data, other data, the on-chain data, and make decisions based on your own you know, risk tolerance. And that being said, if history rhymes, and I think it probably will. We're setting up for a very interesting Q4 and a very interesting 2026 as well. So Bitcoin hit a new all-time high of 126K a couple couple of weeks ago, a week ago, and now pulled back to around $111,500. And more importantly, we fell below this orange line here, the short-term holder cost basis at around 114K. That's the average acquisition price of everyone who bought Bitcoin essentially in the last 155 days that we can see on chain and track on chain. And when this price, when the price falls below this level on the short-term holder cost basis, that's when retail starts to panic. You know, did I buy the top? Is the bear market already already here? Oh my God. You can see it on, you know, crypto Twitter. Uh, people are nervous, especially after Friday shakeout and deleveraging event that we saw with altcoins. But here's where adding in this on-chain data sort of separates good traders from bad traders, in my opinion, because when you zoom out and look at what's actually happening beneath the surface, this looks nothing like a cycle top. In fact, it looks almost like a mid-consolidation uh, event that we've seen in prior bull runs and essentially similar to what we saw in 2024, the summer and in, and in 2025 after we pulled back from 100K. So this is one of my one of my more favorite charts on the site. This is the bull market correction drawdowns and it basically shows bitcoin's price history color coded by bull market cycles and their historical drawdowns right so from the peak of of that cycle and near the top of the chart you see these bars this is representing the drawdowns from that cycle and near the bottom of the chart is each cycle's price performance okay so looking at 2017 in blue for example bitcoin didn't just go up straight to 20k there were more there were multiple 30 to 40 percent corrections throughout the entire way each time people you know thought it was over each time they were wrong uh same story in 2021 for example multiple we had multiple brutal corrections this period especially the march 2020 COVID crash summer 2020 uh sideways action here and may may uh 2021 this 50 percent dump and every single time the consensus was, you know, the bull market's over, and every time Bitcoin made new highs in in uh, in in this late part of November 2021, we made 69k. And so, this is specifically during the Bitcoin four-year cycle theory. So drawdowns in bear market years, for example, 20, uh, 14, 2014, 2018, and 2022, and in potentially 2026, aren't being shown on this chart. So. Where we look at it, uh, looking at where we are today, right? So we've had our mid-cycle consolidation phases so far. The pattern, in my opinion, is about to repeat. This sideways action, in my opinion, is a feature of Bitcoin as a maturing asset class and not seeing, you know, these major parabolic moves as, as often. And I actually, in my opinion, prefer this sort of stair-stepping price action. Where we don't see really these huge run-ups, uh, but we see rather these stair-stepping patterns and potentially don't see as huge of a drawdown, right? So this is more evident in the fact that, you know, on Friday when we saw altcoins drop 40 to 70%, and in some cases over 90%, whereas Bitcoin only dropped, you know, 14, 15%.
So let's check out another metric called the value days destroyed multiple. This metric basically shows when old coins measuring old coins that have been sitting dormant start moving on chain. And so when these long term holders who've been sitting on Bitcoin for years finally to start start to move around coins either to exchanges or other wallets, it shows up on this metric. And so looking at these red spikes, these readings above 2.9, every cycle top has essentially been marked by these extreme value days destroyed readings. So we saw this in 2011. We saw it in the first peak in 2013, 2014. We saw a major amount of, of spikes to these red areas in 2017 throughout the entire bull cycle. We saw this in the first peak in 2021. We didn't see it as high uh, occur in the, in the secondary peak. We saw this during the run up to 72K. We saw subsequent rallies of this metric, not into the red areas, but still uh, rallies nonetheless, where long-term bulls were moving uh, old coins and distributing. And you can also see that during consolidation phases, this, re this goes into the green zone, which is representative of strong holding behavior and long-term rollers not moving coins as often on chain. And so when we look at this pattern, we see value days destroyed stays low and moderate during most of the bull market, and then only spikes to extreme levels during, you know, these global peaks or local peaks in price action. So currently we're still at around moderate activity and not, it's not showing yet that we've seen long-term holders start to move coins in an extreme manner like we saw in 2024 and in 2024 in December as well. And back here when we went to 118K. And so let me show you one more piece of evidence that should just sort of suggests that we still have a little bit of room to run this cycle. And this is the, the HODL waves, the realized cap HODL waves. And so this chart basically shows the realized capitalization broken down by coin age. So each color band represents how long Bitcoin's been held without moving. And so the pink colors to ye yellow, light, light yellow colors at the bottom here represent coins held less than 24 hours up to six months. So this region right here where we see, uh, let me just close these ones. So this region right here, these are young coins, right? And then the warmer colors are anywhere from six months to above 10 years. That is the rep that represents older coins moving on chain. And so when we look at what, what's happening right now with shorter term coins, we see a, a, we see a massive increase in these in these shorter coins at cycle peaks and a lower and, and a decrease in these shorter coins at cycle bottoms from the cycle top, right? So this this what's happening with low, younger coins right now, the 24 hour to three month uh, to six months territory, they're still growing right now, right? So this is this is telling us new buyers are still coming in, still holding fresh capital is flowing into Bitcoin from an on-chain perspective and staying there. And at cycle tops, you see massive increases in shorter term timeframes and all of those upper bands, the older coins start to to, to sort of flood down into those younger coins as as long-term holders distribute to these retail buyers as price peaks. So as you can see in bear markets, this, the long-term holders actually increase the amount of holdings on chain. And then during peak euphoria phases, they essentially distribute onto shorter term time frame holders and then accumulate back into the bear market. And you can see the cycle, this, this sort of dynamic plays out again and again. It's a violent rotation from these younger bands into the older bands. And so when we look at the younger term timeframes, they're still steadily accumulating while you know, these, these older cohorts are remaining relatively stable and are, are still distributing. But this distribution level that we are seeing right now is still not close to what we've seen in prior cycle tops. So when you combine this with the value days destroyed multiple, um, it, it paints a pretty clear picture that old coins are still moving, but new buyers are also still accumulating. And so here's my, my sort of perspective for the next week or two. In my opinion, I think we're going to see consolidation between this range that we've seen 105K to 120K, boring everyone to tears, right? So short-term holders who bought the top near 126K start to capitulate and sell to long-term holders. You know, we, we talked about the fear and greed index. I think that'll still 
remain in sort of a neutral territory, maybe going towards fear a little bit. And then deeper into Q4, late October, November, December, we start to get that final explosive move. That's because, you know, when typically we've seen in, in prior Q4s, that's when retail FOMO starts to come in. That's when, you know, your uncle starts to ask you about Bitcoin at Thanksgiving or December. And that's when mainstream media can't really ignore it anymore. And we've seen this play out again and again during Bitcoin, uh, you know, throughout its entire history. We also see this in the stock market too. So it's not just the, the Bitcoin or cri cryptocurrency market. We see this sort of Santa Claus rally where st stocks start to outperform during Q4. And so if we don't see all-time highs in Bitcoin by December, that's when I'll start to really dive deeper into what the data shows at that time. Because as you guys know, the on-chain data is updating every single day. And we'll look at it at that time and if pivoting the view makes sense at that point, right? And that's also when, in my opinion, starting to pair to take profits at least are important because if history rhymes, 2026 is going to test everyone who thought this time is different yet again. So stay patient during this consolidation. Stick to your plan. And as always, you can just check out all of these charts for free at chartinspect.com. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.